Hey guys, Lincoln here from BowAcademy.org. Today, I want to talk to you about something special. I want to tell you that this tool is super simple to understand. It is riskier, but if you understand it and know how to use it correctly, you stand to benefit greatly by acquiring stocks at a cheaper price than other investors. That tool is called a call warrant. A call warrant, otherwise known as a warrant, gives the holder, the buyer, you, the right but not the obligation to buy a company's common stock at a predetermined price within a period of time. The predetermined price is called the strike price. This price is what is charged to the holder when they go to exercise their right to buy the company's common stock in the future before the expiration date of the warrant. So when the holder wants to convert the warrant into the company's common stock, this is called exercising their right to buy the common stock. So what is the lifespan of a warrant? All warrants have an expiration date, usually between one and five years, sometimes even as long as 15 years. And before this time, the warrant holder has the right to convert their warrant into a common stock of the companies. So why would you buy a warrant? Well, it's pretty simple. Because the warrant has a strike price, a predetermined price that you will have to pay to convert that warrant into a common stock, this guarantees the price of the common stock. So that means that you will have the chance to buy the common stock of a company at a cheaper price than market value at a future date if you so choose to convert your warrant. So how can you buy a warrant? Once the warrant is issued by the company to investors, those investors can then place their warrants on a secondary market such as the stock market then investors like me and you can buy and sell those warrants the same way that we will buy and sell common stocks of a company on the stock market right they are tradable so long as they have not expired and if you hold a warrant you can also sell it at the market value of that warrant right the market value of a warrant just like stocks is whatever the market is willing to pay for it. So if the demand for a company's warrant is high on the market, the price will also be high. But if the demand for that company's warrant is low, the price of that warrant will be low. The price of the warrant on the market is not the same as the strike price. If you buy a warrant on the market at a specific price, whatever price the market decides, you still have to pay the strike price that was predetermined to convert that warrant into a common stock in the future when you so choose to exercise your right to buy the common stock using the warrant. So what happens if a holder of a warrant doesn't exercise the warrant before the expiration date? Well, pretty simple. It expires and it becomes worthless. You can no longer sell it on the market and you can no longer convert it into a common stock. So it's completely useless. So you have to exercise it before the expiration date if you want to. So again, you don't have to exercise it. You can let it expire if you want, but you have to keep in mind that once it, once it expires, you cannot convert it into a common stock anymore. It becomes useless. So what if you buy a warrant or acquire a warrant of a company, but you decide that you don't like this company anymore and you aren't interested in converting your warrant into a common stock? Well, you can then sell your warrant to somebody else, usually on the stock market if they are trading on the stock market. So now you know what a warrant is and how they're used to purchase common stocks at below market value. So now I'm sure you're wondering, how can you actually buy it? So if the warrant is trading on the stock market, you can buy the warrant on a traditional brokerage. Robinhood, Webull, and other popular millennial stock brokerages don't support warrants. So you're going to need to have a traditional stock brokerage such as Charles Schwab or TD Ameritrade. And those brokerages also offer free stock trading and warrant trading. So you can buy and sell warrants without any transaction fees, thanks to the leadership of Robinhood. Okay, so now we know how to buy it, but when does it make sense to buy a warrant? Hey guys, before we continue, please remember to like this video below, subscribe to the channel, and share this video with anyone you think would find value in it. It really helps the channel grow and I will really appreciate it, right? I wanna to continue to bring you guys all the information you need to best help you succeed investing in the stock market.
in order to determine if you should buy a warrant, you need to consider a couple of things. And before you can consider those things, you need a couple pieces of information. So you will need the current market price of the warrant, the strike price of the warrant, the current price of the common stock of that same company on the stock market, and the expiration date of the warrant. So once you have all that information, the first thing you will need to calculate is what is the maximum cost that it will take to acquire that warrant and convert it into a common stock of that company. That means you have to add the current market price of the warrant and the strike price of the warrant in order to come up with the maximum cost of the warrant. So with that, if the maximum cost of the warrant is cheaper than the current stock price of that company, then it makes sense to buy the warrant, right? Because the total cost that it will take to acquire the warrant and turn it into a common stock is cheaper than the current market value of that common stock. Very simple math, right? So now for the hard part. You know the maximum cost of the warrant, but what you don't know is the future price of that common stock. The only reason to buy a warrant is if you believe that the price of the stock for the company is going to continue to rise and go higher than the maximum cost of acquiring the warrant and converting that warrant into a common stock, right? Because you are betting that you can acquire this warrant at a cheap price and convert it still at a price lower than what the common stock of the company costs on the market. That is the only way that the warrant makes sense. If it costs you less to acquire and convert that warrant into a common stock, then it costs you to buy the common stock on the stock market. It's that simple. It's very simple math. But again, the risk is in the timing, right? You have to do this before the expiration date of the warrant. If you don't, the warrant expires and you get nothing. So you have to make sure that you believe that the company is going to continue to grow and their stock price is going to continue to rise. That is the only way that you get a discount on the stock price if your maximum cost of acquiring and converting that warrant into a common stock is lower than the price of the stock on the market. So now we know what a warrant is, what the value of it is, how to acquire it, and what it takes to actually convert a warrant into a common stock. Now let's look at some examples and why these warrants exist. So as I alluded to earlier in this video, companies will usually offer warrants when they are issuing new equity to investors. So these warrants are used as an incentive to close the deal between a company and an investor. So when Warren Buffett goes to buy a company, he usually wants warrants on top of the deal, right? Just as an incentive for him to make him happy, right? Of course, he gets other stuff and the company gets stuff in return, such as money for their equity. But Warren Buffett says, hey, I'm giving you all my money and my name, right? I'm giving you my brand name saying that Warren Buffett is invested in this company. So I want I want something on top of this deal. I want warrants and I want you to pay for them. So I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna pay for the warrant, but once I have it, I'm going to hold it and hopefully your stock price will go up above the strike price of the warrant and then I will exercise my right to buy your common stock. So Warren Buffett uses warrants to acquire common stocks of companies that he wants to buy at a much cheaper price than we public investors, retail investors pay on the stock market. It's that simple. Warrants are just a way to get a deal on common stocks. And then there are SPACs, special purpose acquisition companies. In these deals, when they're offering equity to investors on the public market, they also throw in warrants and say, hey, we know this deal is risky, so here are some warrants on top to make you happy. And so in many cases, such as FMCI, Nikola, DraftKings, these warrants have cost $1,150, right? They have a strike price of $1,150 per warrant to convert a warrant into a common stock of that SPAC. So take FMCI, for example, if you acquire a warrant, if you buy a warrant of FMCI for $10 per warrant and the strike price is $11.50, then the maximum cost is $21.50 to convert that warrant into a common stock. 
So if you believe that the common stock of FMCI is going to rise above 2150 in the future, so then it makes sense to buy that warrant, believing that you will get a deal when you convert that warrant into a common stock because it will be cheaper than the stock price on the stock market in the future. So again, it comes with some risk and some nuance that we haven't covered in this video because on this channel, we try to make things as simple as possible to get started, but you should do your own research, right? Google's your friend. So thank you for watching this video. And as always, remember to practice the bull mentality. The bull mentality is that we know what we're investing in. We understand what we invest in. We believe in what we invest in and we hold for the long term. That is how you build wealth in this country and that is how you give yourself the best chances at succeeding investing in the stock market in any asset class. So thank you again and have a great day.